What's going on, guys? Welcome back. Uh, this is part two of our uh, Dog and Lizzie episode with Grant Hill. Um, as always, make sure you comment and subscribe. Um, but yeah, hope you enjoy this part. Um, again, had a lot of fun talking to Grant, and it just <laughs> went longer than we expected. So uh, broke it up into two parts. Hope you enjoy this one, and uh, we'll check you on the next one. Um, so things were a little bit different then than they are now, obviously, with one and done's and leaving early and things like that. So, you know, you get two national championships, you start on both national championships teams, you play really well um, for two seasons. Was there any like thought of leaving or was it just, you know, I'll be here for four years. And Yeah, no, I mean, it, it, it's, it's funny, man. Like it, it's so different now <laughs> than it yeah. was back then. I didn't think about the NBA. I seriously didn't think about the NBA until like the end of my junior year. Now I, I had, I broke my toe, my junior, like mid season, my junior year, came back, played in the, in the ACC tournament, played in the tournament. We lost to J kid and Cal mm -hmm. in that, you know, incredible game um, in, in that, in the second round. Like I had a, I had a broken toe. Like yeah. and I, I tell Jason all the time, the only reason why y'all beat us, cause I had a broken toe. <laughs> and, um, but, um, you know, so, you know, I, I was, you know, surgery, rehab, sort of getting myself ready. Uh, and so at that moment, you, you kind of think, and in and, and, and my junior year, I roomed with Tony Lane uh, and Thomas Hill, and Thomas mm -hmm. was a senior. So I remember Thomas, you know, he had signed with an agent and he was going uh, to work out with teams. And so that's when it kind of dawned on me, like, wow, this is what, like, next year, like we'll be doing this, you know, yeah. we'll be like, you know, Lang, man, we'll, 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 this is what we'll be doing. You know, we'll mm -hmm. be going and talk, you know, Thomas would come back and he'd have like practice shorts from a team and, and you know, like, oh man, you got the NBA socks, like, you know, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and all of that. And so it was, it was, that's when it like, like really truthfully, like that's when I first started thinking about like the idea of me being in the NBA such a different environment than, than right now. And at that point, nobody had left early. Um, I think the first, first group that left Duke early, I think was like Elton, Brand, yep. and those guys mm -hmm. in 99. So, um, so it was still kind of a, you know, a little bit, you know, old school, age of innocence, you know, four years. Um, and I don't know about you, like, I had fun in college. Like, I, I didn't- Oh, absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I mean, sure. like, I mean, there was a part of me that didn't want to leave. Like, I, yeah. I wish I could have, you know, <laughs> um, you know, so I, I and, and I do think, and I'll say this, and this is not an indictment on, on today's players, but I, I do think a lot of guys miss out on, you know, the entire, you know, sort of college experience. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I would have had the same connection, um, the same um, what's the word I'm looking for? The same, um, just the same overall feeling about the program and about yeah. if I had only been there for one year. Yeah. Um, and I think it's interesting too. Like I, I've noticed in recent years, in the last 10 years, you have a lot of guys who go on to the NBA. A lot of guys are fortunate to, to be one and done players. Um, and, and during the all-star break, they come back to Duke. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you something. I love Duke. <laughs> but I don't know if, like, I can think of some other places I'd want to go. No, I, yeah, 100%. 100%. Way, you know, I'll be somewhere with a, with a, you know, with, with some sand. Yeah, and, a couple and, palm trees. Yeah. Drink an umbrella, whatever. <laughs> and um, and so I, I think a lot of that is because they, they miss it. Like, there's mm -hmm. something about it. They, you know, just being in that environment, being a student, um, I just find that really fascinating. I've watched, um, you know, all-star games. Dukes inevitably had a game at home, and a lot of guys who recently left come back to yeah, be at, at the game. Yeah, at the game, like that's really something. So, um, but anyway, to answer your question, no, not until the beginning of my senior year did I start to think, okay, wow, like NBA is real. Yeah. Um, so then speaking of your senior year, you slid over to point guard um, in 94. Kind of like, 
you kind of mentioned earlier, like before point forwards were a thing, um, what what was that year like for you? I mean, I know you, I know you mentioned earlier, you know, you were kind of playing backup point to uh, Bobby, uh, your freshman and sophomore year. So what was it like now? Okay, I'm the starting point guard. Do, do you like change, do you change your, your mentality? Or are you like, okay, I got to pass it more? Or um, what was that senior year like for you? Yeah, I mean, I, I think I always had a, an, un, an unselfish sort of approach. Like I wasn't someone who was hungry to score. Mm -hmm. I did score, but I, I, I enjoyed facilitating and passing and setting people up. Um, and so, you know, obviously it's a different responsibility now with the ball in your hands. Yeah. You know, coach and I talked about it in the off season, like, look, I'm going to put the ball in your hands. They changed the rule that year where you didn't have, you didn't have a five second count when okay, you're yep. in the basket. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so I remember, <laughs> I remember that summer, um, and I'm, 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 you know, I'm down there in Durham, I'm, you know, I'm rehabbing, I'm, in summer school and they used to have this magic johnson tape i think it was like sh showtime with magic you mm -hmm. could buy it at the video store and they had footage of magic at michigan state where he was you know the point guard there and so it might have been like 10 clips and so i would watch that over and over again and mm -hmm. watch his moves and all that and so like and i remember chris collins was uh he just finished his freshman year and so i went up to chicago to hang out with Chris and we went to the Bulls game. The Bulls were in the, in the conference finals. They beat the Knicks the last game in the old Chicago or last season in the old Chicago stadium. So I spent like a weekend with Chris and I was like, Chris, you're my Byron Scott. <laughs> like, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm, Hey man, <laughs> Hey, run the break. I'm, I'm going to hit you. Like, you know, I'm gassing him up. And, yeah. And, um, and I knew we had Cherokee and Tony and then Jeff came in as a freshman, Jeff mm -hmm. Cape. And he really, he wasn't, you know, Joey Beard, Greg Newton were, were rated higher than him, but, but Jeff really separated himself like from day one. Yeah. And, and so, you know, really Jeff and I became close uh, at that time. And, um, and so, you know, I, I felt like, like, I don't know. I felt like with those two, especially Chris and Jeff, like I needed them for us to have a chance to win. I, I needed them to be really good. Yeah. I knew Cherokee, I knew Tony, I knew they were, they had already started for a couple of years. Um, so I know just as a, as a friend, as a teammate, I invested a lot of time with those two. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just hanging out, spending time with them. Um, you know, just, I think big picture knowing I needed them, we needed them to, do, to, to, to try to win. Yeah. But Carolina had just won. And, mm -hmm. They returned everybody but George Lynch. They brought in like Rashid Wallace, Jerry mm -hmm. Stackhouse, Jeff McGinn. Like they had, so everybody was was picking them to, to win. And I remember there was like the opening press conference or whatever, media day for seniors. And I remember I said, we're gonna be the silent assassins. Everyone's focusing on them and we're just going to go about our business and you guys are going to look up and see we're right there in the thick of things. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of bold. <laughs> um, and so, you know, but I, I you know, I, I started off at point and, and, you know, early on, I'm trying to get my rhythm, you know, get back from, from my injury. Yeah. Um, but I'm also trying to get everybody going. Like I'm trying to get Jeff and Chris, you know, Tony was, Tony was the best player, you know, on our team preseason, maybe the first month or two of the season. I mean, Tony was playing unreal. Mm -hmm. And um, and so, um, but I, I started to find my way. Um, and, and at times I struggled that year, like finding that balance yeah. between uh, facilitating and scoring. And, um, and I think at times even coach took me off the ball just mm -hmm. to get me in a, in a scores mindset. Right. And, um, but yeah, I mean, that was a fun season. I remember, you know, big dog, Glenn Robinson, you know, he was, he was on a tear that year. Like he, mm -hmm. I think he averaged 30 a game. Like <sighs> he was killing. That's and crazy in college. He's <laughs> smoking. Yeah. Six, nine can shoot the ball, athletic. 
Um, and I remember my dad was like, man, like, don't you want player of the year? This was early, like in maybe in December, like, you know, Glenn, Glenn's running off with it. And I said, mm -hmm. I want to win a championship. Like, and I know that like, and it wasn't really in my, like, I wasn't a scorer like that. Uh, I had moments, but I wasn't, I, I didn't approach the game mentally like, like that. Mm -hmm. um, but I felt like I, I, I need these guys to really develop for us, you know, to become champions, hopefully at the end of the year. And I'm proud that they did like, you know, Jeff just got better and, and, and gained, you know, confidence and, and trust in everyone. You know, Chris is Chris running around the court, you know, Oh like, yeah. Yeah. He yeah. Breathes, <laughs> you know, and, and, um, but that team, and I, I want to be careful in how I say this, that team um, might not have been the most talented mm -hmm. and obviously not the best team, but in terms of like togetherness, in terms of like just on the same page to connect connectivity, I thought by far we were, we were that. Yeah. Like it was just, and um, like I enjoy, like I enjoyed those guys. Yeah. And, um, and so it was not that I didn't enjoy the other guys, but it just, it just seemed like we, we, we like we had to trust each other mm -hmm. and be connected for us to have a chance to win. Yeah. And, um, now there were some funny moments. Like I remember we went to Virginia and, you know, I'm from Virginia. A lot of my, my high school friends went there and, you know, I'm, I'm tight with Corey. Alexander and Junior mm -hmm. Burles and those guys. And um, we beat them. We beat them pretty easily, like maybe by 15, which, you know, back then was big. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. But I had four points in the game. And I was so proud of that game. I might have taken like six shots. But I felt like I dominated the game without scoring. Yeah. On defense, assisting, leadership, just – steals, everything. Like, I felt like I left my imprint on the game without scoring a lot of points. And the next thing you know, they're like, oh, you know, Cornell Parker locked up Grant Hill. And, <laughs> blah, 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 and this, that, and the other. And, you know, Cornell, the, the Grant stopper and this, that, and the other. <laughs> and, and so I was like, so we played them in Cameron. And um, and Dick Vitale was doing the game. And, and, you know, anytime Dick Vitale came around, you know, it was, you know, you get all hyped up. Oh, and, yeah. And so I was out for blood that game. Like that game, <laughs> like I won with Cornell Parker. I came out and I was hunting my shot. Mm -hmm. I might have gone for, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I got 18, 19, first half, whatever. And every time I score, we, you know, we shoot on the on the basket on the visiting side. Every time I score and I'm running you know, backpedaling, I'm looking over at Corey Alexander on the bench. <laughs> Corey was out that year. He had a broken foot. Every time I score, I'm looking at Corey. Like, and, and like you know. <laughs> And um, and so, but finding that balance between facilitating and scoring, um, you know, I, I think I got better as the year went on. Yeah. But early on, it was it was it was a, it was a bit of a struggle at times. Yeah. What was that? Did you? I'm not asking. Was there a difference in that run to the Final Four and then ultimately the title game, um, from your perspective? You know now you know, not being an underclassman anymore, senior captain, um, leading the team. Was there a difference um, for you going on that run? I mean, and, you know, having done it twice, having and, and gotten gotten the title twice previously? Yeah, you know, um, there was a huge difference. Um, the first two years, you know, Christian and Brian were, were, were really the, the leaders, the captains, the personalities mm -hmm. on that team. And, you know, seniors – upperclassmen, the vets, they, they kind of took ownership of the team. And, uh, and that was kind of how it was back then. Uh, you know, my junior year was a tough year because I was hurt and, you know, and, and it was just a bit chaotic. Uh, I wasn't healthy. I wasn't right. Um, but then, you know, my senior year, like, it's on me. And, yeah. and, and, yeah. and Tony and Marty, you know, as seniors as well. And so there's just a responsibility, an ownership um, that comes with that. And that was the first time that I had been in that position while at Duke. Um, so I think that was great for my growth. Um, not, not just in terms of what we did during the tournament run and, and ultimately losing in the finals of Arkansas, 
but really helped preparing me for what was to come. Mm -hmm. And that senior year, more than any other year, prepared me for the pressures and the expectation of being a third pick and kind of a franchise saver in the NBA. Yeah. And so, you know, just, you know, I think before you, 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 you tended to focus on yourself, you know, you tend to focus on, okay, make sure I'm ready. I'm good. You know, I come out, do what I need to do to help us win. Like now you felt like you, you know, you had to make sure everybody was good. And, right. you had, and so I was more of a cerebral guy. I was a little bit quiet. I didn't have great confidence um, when I first arrived. Um, kind of a quiet, soft-spoken guy. And you know, like you have to talk when you play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and that took me a minute to figure like, how can yeah, you, you and me both. <laughs> how can you talk and play? Like I, I just, it, yeah. it was so foreign to me. Um, and, and now I'm like, how can you not talk? You yeah, know? yeah. Mm -hmm. But just like investing in those guys and investing in one another, um, you know, I, I'd like to think it was impactful to them and to the team and helped us, you know, go as far as we did. But I know it was it was really really important for me and mm -hmm. um, to have that you know that role and, um, and 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 so that that was that was a, a huge growth period for for me in my career. Yeah, and then um, so you know you go into the pros and you know kill it. You know you're all NBA. Um, you know you're getting six seven assists a game, twenty five points, rebound. You know kind of doing doing it all. Um, how do you think, which the way the game is become today, you know, you see a lot more point forwards. You see your LeBron, your Giannis's, Luca, you know, even um, Jason Tatum, you know, kind of takes the playmaking role sometimes for the Celtics. How do you think your game would translate today in today's game, you know, 20 plus years later? Yeah, you know, um, <laughs> Um, you know, I, I, I think one of the differences, I mean, the shooting now is, is incredible. Yeah. And, um, the use, the usage rate from the three point line, uh, is at an all time high. And as a result, uh, you know, there's more of an emphasis, you know, an expectation for bigs to be able to stretch the floor. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think you, you combine that with removing some of the physicality from the game. Uh, freedom of movement mm -hmm. just happened. I think with, with my ability and, and athleticism to put the ball on the floor, you know, and this may sound super arrogant, but like, I feel like, I feel like it would have, <laughs> would have been easier, you know? I mean, I yeah. Like, yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. I, I feel mean, you. I feel I mean, you. I mean, back in the day, like you think about it, I mean, I was a slasher. I was a driver. I mean, I, I developed the mid range and, you know, was able to work and operate from there also in the post, but you had two guys in the paint. You yeah. know, the power forward in the center who played mm -hmm. in the lane. And, and then you had two people guarding them. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, there wasn't the spacing that there is now. So, yeah. you know, I still remember going against the Knicks and, you know, yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. Oakley, yeah. You know, Honor would check you as you're like, you're getting hit. Now it's, it's you're not getting hit. No. And, you know, that big guy's in the corner. Mm -hmm. you know, or, or yeah. the, the key. And so, you know, it's a different game in that sense. Um, you know, one of the things I think that helped me, and you talked about point forwards and big guys handling the ball. You know, when I came in the league, you didn't have that as mm -hmm. much. And, you know, we talked about magic. And, you know, even my, my senior year, like, I, I backed you down. Like, I played with my back to you, like Magic and yep. Smith and every other big. And, you know, I figured out how to do that and, you know, kind of spin off you and, you know, get to get to my spots or whatever. Um and then that summer, we're playing pickup ball all summer. And Quinn Snyder, who, you know, obviously a Duke grad coaching at Utah, mm -hmm. he had been on the staff with the Clippers that the year before. He was coming back to Duke to go to business school or go to law school and be a grad assistant. But he was playing pickup ball with us in the gym. He was still athletic, still could play. And so in the gym, I'm I'm coming down here. I'm bop bop. I'm yeah yeah. You know, do the legs cross over. I'm trying to be Tim Hardaway, uh, Chris <laughs> Jackson. Like I'm you know I'm one, I'm that tall guy. that always wanted to be like a small point guard. So yeah. I had you downhill, <laughs> and I remember he pulled me aside like maybe like a month before we left for camp, and he said, "Hey man, like you got to play like that 
in the games. Mm-hmm. Like when you put your back to me, that's one thing. But when you're coming face to face downhill, like that's hard to defend. And so he kind of like planted that seed. And then when I got to the league, like I did it. I started coming at people and crossing them up and, you know, mm-hmm. whatever, whatever. And you didn't really see that from like small forward. Yeah. You know, you didn't see guys, I think, that that had that bop bop, you know, or whatever. And um, and so, yeah, you see it all the time now. But yeah, like, yeah. I think that like, I think it allowed me to come in and, and have success right away. You know, I remember calling my friends up like, yo, man, this is easy to leave. <laughs> like, you know, I'm like, man, like, I'm like, you know, I'm calling my boys up, you know, my first, you know, I don't know, I'm averaging 20 something a game. And, yeah. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm putting up work and I'm like, man, the NBA, man, this is easy, man. Like, I, you know, I'm, I'm feeling myself and uh, whatever the case may be. But, um, you know, I, I do think to be able to, the first step, to, the, the ability to attack the basket, get into the paint. And then the fear of if you help, I'm going to find you. Yeah. You know, find yeah. Guys. Um, you know I, I would love to play in this era. Yeah. Um, and, yeah. Um, you know, I think I would do well. I, I absolutely. Uh, for, <laughs> yeah. I, I would love to see um, your game in, in today's, in today's game, you know, with the lack of hand checking, you can't touch anybody. Uh, like you said, there's nobody in the paint. There's like three guys that post up in the whole league. <laughs> so yeah, I think uh I think you'd had a lot of fun. Um so coming in as a rookie, you know, third pick, um, uh, you kind of alluded to it earlier, kind of a guy who's supposed to turn a franchise around. Is I know it comes with a lot of pressure. So how do you, you know, come in and play as well as you did without feeling like, you you know, you're stepping on guys' toes or, you know, like still and shine. Was was that in something that you had to deal with coming in as a rookie? Yeah. You know, I mean, look, the team, the Pistons had won 20 games in mm-hmm. the fire ride. And, um, and so once again, you know, you, you, you show up and you want to sort of prove yourself, you know, yeah. prove that you um, are worth that pick. And, you know, I showed up a week before camp, <laughs> you know, it was, mm-hmm. I was in Durham that time, but I, I had a, like, I had really grown, like, I think my four years was really a, a growth process and really, I think, I think, I think my belief in myself and my game caught up to my game. Yeah. That, sense mm-hmm. absolutely so like it was the perfect timing where now like i'm ready to come in and i'm comfortable standing out like mm-hmm. i'm comfortable with that idea and belief that i can do that and so yes very respectful joe dumars a legend someone i watched admired um but you know i think i just i came in and, and, and i think my talent and my game was ready to sort of like you couldn't deny yeah. that I was going to, you know, you know, I think sort of putting myself in the, in, 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 you know, in the mindset or in the perspective of others, like, okay, yeah, he's going to help. I remember Lindsey Hunter, the first day we practiced, um, you know, I showed up, we played pickup ball, and then we go to a little Thai restaurant in Auburn Hills. He's like, yo, man, you're going to help us, man. Like, I mean, I still remember the conversation. <laughs> I'm like, for real? He's like, man, you, what you, like, man, we, hey. Like me, you, and Alan. Like, we're, like I remember, I remember that conversation. It was yeah. like it was. It kind of confirmed, like, okay, like you know, I'm gonna be okay. Mm-hmm. Um, and then my first game. Um, the only reason I know this is because somebody told me this recently. So it's not like I remember all my stats. But <laughs> like the first game, I was 25, 10, and five. like I first game, like I got you know, I came out and filled up the stat sheet. You know, yeah. and well, and was able to do things, and so. It, it there was not a moment. I know that I, I think there's a podcast, the Knuckleheads podcast, and um, who is it? Um, Darius Miles and mm-hmm. uh, Quentin Richardson. Quentin Richardson, yeah. And they always ask like, "What? Who? You know, who, who busted your tail or whatever?" Mm-hmm. And like, I try to think about it. I can't remember because I feel like I was busting everybody for, like <laughs> out the gate. Like I was like, I was like, you know. So, I mean, I'm not even trying to brag. I'm not. Like, I, I can't even, like, my rookie year, I was, like, coming out, like, and so, um, 
you know, so anyway, I mean, it, it, it was thrusted into that. It was crazy. Jordan was out of the league. There was a lot of attention on me. Yeah. I think playing at Duke and, and being on national television, um, I remember Coach K's wife said at our senior dinner that, and I can't remember the exact numbers, but like if I played in 125 games at Duke, 120 of them were on national TV. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. it was some crazy number when you thought about it. And, and so people, whether you liked Duke or you didn't like Duke. You had to watch. You knew yeah. who Duke, you knew who I was. So I think mm -hmm. that momentum and then having a great start you know, it was just, it was a whirlwind, you know, yeah. it was an absolute whirlwind um, right away, right out the gate. Yeah. So then, you know, obviously you come out, I think you co-rookie of the year, right? With Jake Kidd. Yeah, I was robbed. <laughs> <laughs> I was robbed, man. Hey. You know. Oh, that's funny. Nah, that's, um, that's my guy. That's my yeah. Guy. Um, so, you know, rookie of the year, you propel that in the, you know, you're all NBA perennial all-star and then, um, you know, the injuries hit, you know, so three, like three plus seasons, I think, um, get cut short with injuries and four, four, seasons. four okay. So four seasons. And then, so coming from such, such a, you know, high place, um, and then having the injuries, you know, cut those seasons short, how did you adapt your game, you know, both physically and mentally to still then be able to play another decade um, in the league and, you know, and start a lot of games and, and you know, help playoff teams, um, you know, despite having, you know, those setbacks with the injuries. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's, it's, I, you know, sometimes I look back at it and I can't believe I, I stuck with it for, for those four years and went through everything. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm in the process of writing a book right now. And so I really kind of detail and chronicle like what happened. Because mm -hmm. I, I don't, you know, I don't think people really know, but um, you know, I do think that sports, you know, sports conditions you to believe that you always have a chance. Mm -hmm. you know, to believe that we can beat you in LV. Mm -hmm. You know, to believe you're, you know, Christian can make that shot, you know, to believe that we can overcome obstacles, that we can beat a team that's favored. We can come back, with, you know, from, you know, down 10 with three minutes left. Yep. You just, it teaches you to keep fighting, you know, and keep believing and keep working and you'll be rewarded or you have a chance to be rewarded. So I think, I think that, I think also just understanding sort of having lived it you know, a father who played and then retired and, and, and having his contemporaries obviously going through the same, like just knowing that like when it's over, it's over. Yeah. And, um, and so I, I, I think I just, I wanted to give myself like every opportunity to resume my career, um, you know, before I ultimately, you know, move on. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so at times I think people might've thought I was delusional to think that I, I used to always say, man, you know what? I'm going to make up for it when I'm 40. You know, I'm going to play till I'm 40. You know, mm -hmm. like I'm going to make up for it up to on the back end. And um, and so the, the, the funny part is I I made it to 40 my last year with the Clippers. Yeah. And like my body expired. Yeah. You know, like literally, <laughs> yeah. my body said, "You said 40? Okay, I'm done." That's and, it. And, 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 and 45. Like, 45. You know. And um, but, um, you know, just, you just keep fighting. You keep thinking, okay, and, and you know, you, you, you suppress some emotions and feelings. You don't, you just, it's like you just keep sawing wood. You keep thinking, okay, I'm going to get back. I'm going to do this. Um, you know, you play games with, your, with yourself mentally yeah. and emotionally um, to get through. And then, you know, once you get back, um, you know, Derrick Rose missed two years. Mm -hmm. course, like, I missed four. Good portion of a good portion of four years and so instead of feeling like you know i'm the best player on the court yeah you know i my detroit years maybe not my first year but i'd say my second year on 
every time I stepped on the court, I felt like I was the best player. Whether mm-hmm. I was or I wasn't, I yeah. felt like I was. Yeah. You know, and I went against Jordan. It was like, man, he got guard. Like, you know, that yeah, was yeah, my yeah. And, and I think great players have that belief in themselves. And when I came back, I was just happy to be back, mm-hmm. which is a beautiful thing. Like, it's a beautiful thing. You know, this gift you had, this opportunity to play at the highest level was taken from you. There's an appreciation for now doing it. Yeah. But I kind of lost that, that like I'm the best player mentality, you mm-hmm. know? And so um, now also physically, I got older. I had restrictions because of the ankle. They took a, a wedge out of my ankle and realigned my foot. And I mean, they, they did some things and, and the cumulative effect of all the surgeries, it, it obviously paid its toll. It, it, it paid a toll or it, it costed me certain things that I could do before. Um, I remember, I remember I came back, I was, I sat out the whole 2003, 2004 season and I scheduled my doctor's appointment at Duke around Duke basketball games <laughs> yeah. for, for CAT scans, like every month and like Carolina game. Or, yeah. And so I, you know, I'd come back and, and it'd be an excuse to come back. And I remember, I don't know if it was during the season, it might've been the night before a game or something, but I remember that year I went to dinner with Coach K and to the university club. And he asked me, he was like, Grant, you know, who are the top five players in the NBA? As I went down a list, Shaq and this, you know, this guy, that guy. So he said, okay, you know, who, who's the next, the next top five? You know, so I'm going, I'm getting names. And so anyway, we, we go through this exercise, the top 20 players in the league. And, and after I give him, a, and I'm really like trying to think, like, I'm like, you know, okay, yeah. you know, I'm like, really, and, and he says, you know, I asked you the top 20 guys in the league, you didn't mention yourself. And, you know, I didn't really understand or appreciate like that exercise or what he was trying to say there, because I was just like, I just wanted to get back. I was happy to be healthy, mm-hmm. I felt like this was it, but kind of lost that edge a little bit. And, and maybe that's a good thing. Maybe that allowed me to go and play another decade. Um, but I was just happy to be back. Yeah. And um, and you know what? I enjoyed like that, that that last part of my career. I needed to to be healthy. I needed to to experience that and, and go out sort of on my own terms after you know that devastating injury ordeal. Yeah. And then I think I think it was, it was 2018, right? Um, your Hall of Fame induction in 2018. Yeah. Um, first Hall of Famer on the uh, on the pod. So what is I mean, I don't know. What is that like? You know, you get the call, uh, emotions, and then you know the actual ceremony, like going through all that. What it what is what was that like from your perspective? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I think you know we talk about games you play and things you do, the mental games that kind of fool yourself sometimes and. I kind of had, you know, early in my career, I think I thought about my legacy. You know, mm-hmm. I thought about, okay, you know, okay, rookie of the year, check. You know, yep. Olympic gold medal, check. Yep. Uh, I'm an all-star. Okay, all NBA. Like, I'm on that path. I'm on that trajectory. Uh, I got to win a championship, you know. Yeah. Michael didn't win one until his seventh. You know, you know you're thinking all these things and, and it, you know, you you know, you're, you're, when you're a young celebrity basketball player, or whatever, you're a little bit narcissistic. You think about it. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And so, um, and so when I when I got healthy and came back, you know, the idea of the Hall of Fame, like I convinced myself that I didn't need that. Yeah. And I felt like, you know what, like I don't need that validation. What I went through with my injury and being able to overcome that and come back was enough validation and um so i kind of convinced myself to almost like prepare myself in case i didn't get in yeah and uh and so when i got that call it was <laughs> it's a really funny story so um <laughs> so I, i'm up for um you know i'm eligible it's 2018 and um i'm a finalist and um, they announced that at the all-star game, like the, the group, the list, and then mm-hmm. they narrow it down and make the announcement at the final four. 
And so we are in Omaha, Nebraska. Okay. Uh, when Duke lost to Kansas mm -hmm. in the uh, Elite Eight. And so I was told that John DeLeva, who's the executive director of the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame, was going to call me. And I was under the impression he was going to call me on Sunday, which was the game that we had against Kansas. Mm -hmm. And when, when Grayson missed that shot and went in and out, I yeah. guess. Yeah, uh, heartbreaker. Heartbreaker indeed. <laughs> so they call to let you know whether you made it or, or if you, you don't make it. Mm -hmm. and, and so I knew that. So I, I, tell, I told Jim Nance and Bill Raftery the night before, like, I don't know how this is going to work. Like, I'm going to get a call. And, you know, the game was like early afternoon. I was taking a car to the airport, had a charter taking me to the Bahamas. You know, it was my kid's spring break. <laughs> if they don't catch me before this, I'm going to miss it. Like, I'm going to be on this flight. So, like, so I'm like, they're going to call. And, and so, like, leading up, like, I'm so nervous before. Yeah. And it's Duke. Like, it's always hard for me. Like, I don't know how Jay Billis does it. Like, it's hard for me to call Duke game. Like, yeah. I try to be objective. I don't want to be too much of a homer, but mm -hmm. hey, I am a Dookie, so I'm going to embrace that. Yeah. And then it's like, did you just, it's just hard to do. Like, you, you, you're, you're too emotionally invested. Uh, so I have that. And then I have this Hall of Fame announcement uh, or phone call. So I told the guys, like, look, if during the game, the phone, I'm going to answer. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, like, I'm just letting you know if I, put, if I take my headset off and, uh, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm answering the call. Yeah. And so... The game starts, and in the first half, the phone rings, mm -hmm. and I don't recognize the number. And I'm like, I'm showing, I'm showing Jim and Bill. I'm like, <laughs> so I take my headset off, and I like pull back my chair, and I answer the phone, and it wasn't the Hall of Fame. Like I don't know who it was. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't at all. And so I put my headset back on, and like, I guess I had a look on my face of like disappointment yeah yeah get back to calling the game and so then there's a there's a timeout and they're like so did it happen like, you didn't get it like you yeah, know yeah. and i'm like no it was a wrong number and uh <laughs> so uh it was pretty funny but um anyway i didn't get a call that day it ended up being okay. later that week and um you know it was surreal and it was a flood of emotions and feelings things that i didn't think that i would i would feel yeah experience um and you know, I think, I think for me, you know, there was always something about just not like feeling like I had a great career, a full career where mm -hmm. I experienced a little bit of everything, but feeling like it was incomplete. Mm -hmm. like I didn't get a chance to see it all the way through. And you carry that with you a little bit, like, you know, what it would have been like if, if I didn't get hurt, you know, I was progressing. I was just sort of entering my prime, uh, so on and so forth. And it was like, once that call happened, it was just like, I don't know, it was like instant validation. Mm -hmm. Like, like mm -hmm. that didn't mean anything anymore. That feeling of like incomplete. Yeah. You know, I don't even know if I'm explaining it right, but it, it just, it was just like, okay, everything is good. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and it's true, like I haven't felt those same feelings about, you know, my career in that sense. And so, you know, it, it, it's great. And then, you know, just the lead up and, you know, it's funny, they want you to write a speech and they were telling us beforehand, it's gotta be five minutes. Mm -hmm. the speeches have gone so long and we can be a long night. We had a big class. And so they told me to go first. Oh. They're like, you know, it was really funny. So, um, so I had Coach K, Pat Ewing, Isaiah Thomas, and Alonzo Mourning as my presenters, all for different reasons. And um, we start; it's, it's on TV, but not everybody's in in the venue. Yeah. And um, so they bring me to stage and my presenters, but Isaiah Thomas and Alonzo aren't; they're not even in the building. And so, and then. <laughs> It's really funny. So, you know, I, you write your speech and they, and they get, you give it to them and yeah. they put it on the teleprompter. Uh -huh. And so early on, like I acknowledge each person and I'm like, oh, oh, like what's going to happen? Like when they get to Isaiah, 
and Alonzo. Like I, I don't remember exactly what, you know, what what I wrote about them, but I wanted mm-hmm. to say something about them. And anyway, I was like worried about the prompter and them not being there and what mm-hmm. we were gonna do. So I, I mentioned Pat Ewing, I mentioned Coach K, and then I go to Isaiah, and I promise you, it was like Isaiah just appeared. Like <laughs> he appeared out of nowhere. Like he was there. Like right? he came up. And I talked about Isaiah and then I got to Alonzo and then Alonzo was right there. Like it was like <laughs> the funniest thing ever. Um, but the whole, the whole weekend, I mean, it was just, it was, it, it was fun. It was, um, it was a lot of work. They had us moving around. Uh, so you didn't really get to take it all in mm-hmm. except at enshrinement. Mm-hmm. Um, but to, 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 you know, to be in rarefied air and yeah, absolutely. It, it was, you know, it's not one of those things you really think about when you're young. Mm-hmm. but um certainly was incredible and um grateful for that you know that kind of recognition yeah um so then you know now you're doing the the tournament you're doing some nba stuff um is it more nerves playing or announcing the tournament oh that's a good question um you know, the, the tournament's tough because I don't live in college basketball. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the way the, 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 the CBS Turner uh, partnership, you know, we kind of helicopter in. Yeah, yeah. At the end there. And so the, the nerve wracking part is the preparation for the first week. Mm-hmm. And you get your assignments late Sunday night and you're like, it's like scrambling for a test. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> trying to learn names and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that, you know, it's fun though. Like it's the, the, the preparation is fun. And, yeah. um, but you know, you, you have to watch video. Like I, I'll try to watch three games on each team mm-hmm. and, you know, you, you go on your computer and hoops was it hoops one media and they, all the games are on, you know, you can go and access them and, mm-hmm. you know, you, you need to see players, you know, understand their ten- tendencies, things of that nature. Um, but it's a bit of a whirlwind. And then that first day is brutal. Yeah. Games. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it, it's, you know, just keeping your energy up. Um, so once you can get past that first day, it's it's, it's smooth sailing. Like, it's pretty mm-hmm. easy. But it's fun, man. Like, the tournament, there's this great spirit, this great energy. Um, you know, it's, it's, you know, it really is an honor and a privilege to, to be able to, to broadcast those games um, and to, to have gone to the final fours, you know, as, as a kid and then to play in them and then now broadcast them yeah, uh, and to see it from all different angles. Yeah. You've, yeah. You've had every experience. <laughs> well, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Now, like, you know, I, I, it was funny. So this past year, it was, it was, uh, I remember, I, I can't remember if it was the semifinal game or it might've been the, elite eight game um so i i have my i have i might have one right here um i have my boards and i usually do it like on a manila folder and i'll put like one team on one side and the other on the other um and and then i'll have a highlighter you know over people's names and stats and all that and i have my own system and so i ended up we did oregon like maybe in the sweet 16. Mm -hmm. But for Baylor, I used a green highlighter and a yellow highlighter. And so um, I remember during the game, because the, the colors, like the yellow and the green, I kept calling them, I think I was calling them, I was calling Baylor Oregon. And yeah. like I did it like three or four times. And, <laughs> and, uh, and then my producer was like, you know, after the fourth or fifth time, I was like, Grant, please stop calling. <laughs> you know, Twitter is killing you right now, you know? And, and, and so, you know, like that happens, you know, I mean, yeah. it is what it is. And obviously the Baylor faithful get upset. Yeah, and, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And, um, but, you know, aside from those kind of minor mistakes, it's, it's fun. It's fascinating to get to learn the stories of the teams, um, you know, spend time, spending time with the players, the coaches. Um, one thing that's always awkward, and I'll just say this. So I, we've done Duke a lot. We've, we've you know, mm-hmm. we've won their games. And one thing that Jim Nance and his crew, the crew likes to do is sort of in between the two games, they like to meet with the teams. Yeah. And we'll we'll bring Duke in. 
So when Duke won in 15, you know, we'll spend time, we spent time with Okafor, Winslow, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Quinn Cook, you know, a starting five. Yeah. And a lot of times we'll meet with the starting five separate from the coach. And, and so, uh, you know, I always ask the guys, you know, just to kind of loosen them up. Because you know, they see Jim Nance, Bill Raftery, myself, everything is yes, sir, no, sir. Yeah. You know, they yeah. look at me as like, you know, old man, grand or whatever. So <laughs> I always try to relax everybody. So the first thing I always ask them is, who does the best Coach K imitation? <laughs> and inevitably somebody will say, and then they all kind of laugh, you know, laugh and relax or whatever. So in 2019, we're in, Char uh, not Charleston, we're in Columbia, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, it was the day before we almost lost to UCF. In yep. Game. Yeah, I was I was down there for that one. You were down there? Okay. Yeah. Incredible game. Incredible yeah, game. It was, that was nuts. Johnny Dawkins had that team ready. Yeah. And um, funny story. So we're meeting with the Duke team. And Coach K's in the meeting. Mm -hmm. And so... So first thing I, 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 you know, Coach K's here, but I got to ask the question. So I'm yeah. like, okay, which one of you guys does the best Coach K invitation? And I'm thinking it's going to be silence because Coach is there. Mm -hmm. And right away, Zion goes, oh, and everybody's pointing <laughs> to Zion. And, and then Zion proceeds to imitate Coach. And like everybody's laughing, like the, the guys on the team are laughing, Jim, Tracy. Raftery, Coach K's even laughing. Yeah. I'm uncomfortable. Like I'm, I'm the only one making it. Like I'm like very uncomfortable because the thought of like imitating Coach K during the tournament. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. oh man, like that's like. So I was like, oh man, like what have I done? Like I, I was, I was, I was the only one in the room. Like I looked over at coaches, and he was really laughing. Like I could tell he he liked that team. Yeah, and yeah. He liked the interaction. Um, but I was like, whoa, like, this is, what's going on here? Like I, yeah. I, I was, and, uh, and so, you know, I mean, coach obviously adapts and changes and, you know, throughout the years and, uh, and, uh, and so it was a cute moment, but, um, but stuff like that, like th those interactions, um, you know, obviously on air is fun, but the yeah. whole, the totality of the whole experience is, is what makes it special for me. Yeah. And then this year, obviously it was a bit different. Um, one Duke's not in the tournament, um, but then, <laughs> then um, not having the fans and things like that. So what was it like from your perspective? Because, you know, for me at home watching, it's kind of the same. Um, it's a similar experience. You know, I'm watching at home. And, you know, it's exciting. I know I was I was running around when uh, Gonzaga hit that shot against UCLA, you know, excited. So what is it like? How How is it different this year as opposed to other years? Well, one of the parts that we like is, is, is our crew. We spend time together do normally during a tournament, you know, mm -hmm. dinners, you know, raft, you know, there's a lot of drinking, a lot of wine. <laughs> um, and, um, you know, that part makes it fun. The socializing with one another, uh, the dinners, the coming back after a long, um, you know, a long day of games and going to our hotel, and, you know, having a, uh, a meeting room with pizza and wine and watching mm -hmm. games on the West Coast and just all that time we spend together, it becomes like family and it's something you look forward to. And because of the COVID protocols this year, we weren't permitted to do that. Yeah. So if we weren't calling games, like we were in our room and, you know, there were, you know, I remember I did, yeah, like the Final Four, we finished Saturday night. I didn't leave my room until I left for the final game. Really? Yeah. So wow. Uber service, Uber Eats, you know, having it dropped off in your room. Yeah. Um, so that part was tough. You know, at times you feel like the walls were closing in, mm -hmm. um, but you didn't really get a chance to have that total experience with, with our whole crew. And, uh, and so we figured it out that we kind of game. So they weren't, they weren't going to let us do anything. So we ended up bringing the wine to the green room. Uh, okay. And after the games, we would just kind of stay in the in the green room, at least for the final four, for the semis and the finals, until they kicked us out, like until they <laughs> shut down the building. And so literally, like security came in there and were like, okay, like it's two a.m. Y'all gotta go, yeah. I have to go. We're locking the doors. You guys have to leave. And so that was the only sort of social interaction. And and, and it would be like 10, 15 of us, you know, the producers, the directors. 
all of us as broadcasters, all the people behind the scenes, that was the only experience we kind of got to, 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 to do those types of things. And uh, so that, that was fun at the end. Um, but it was, it was, a, it was an unusual, you know, like, like everyone, it's, it's mm-hmm. a tough year and we all have to adapt and adjust. And, and we certainly did uh, yeah. this, past, this past final four. Yeah. So you were part of one of the more memorable moments uh, in national championship history with the <clears throat> Chris Jenkins shot. And during the play, while the play's happening, um, Archie Diakono is bringing the ball up. You say he's got, he's got Jenkins as he's bringing it up. And, and that, how do you, how do you see that? Cause I feel like everyone's just in those like high pressure moments. Everybody's just staring at the ball. Um, was that just the point guard in you? Like, oh yeah, you know, you, you, you just see the whole floor. Um, yeah. So how, how, I mean, how did you spot that out in that moment? Well, 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 two things that were important about that moment. And that's something like, it's really funny. It speaks to the selflessness of Jim Nance because he's so excited that in that moment that I got in there and was able to say something and it was perfect. Like it, it didn't, you know, it, it was, it was, it added to the, to the, to the, you know, to the, to the commentary in that moment. Mm-hmm. And one of the things early on, like, you know, when I first started calling game, like I'd never called a game before. Yeah. They told me to, you know, Hey, you're going to do the final four. Like I had done three NBA games and I was terrible. Mm-hmm. And, and some may still say I'm terrible, but, um, <laughs> but you know, I, I hadn't, so I, I was a little overwhelmed. I was insecure. I'm working with two icons, you know? Yeah. And, and so Jim, the first couple of years used to really encourage me, like, get in there. Like, if you step on me or talk over me, so be it. Like, mm-hmm. just like, get in there. Don't. And, and I think there was just a respect and a deference, um, you know, being deferential for, you know, towards those guys. Um, so I think, you know, being able to get in there in that moment and just even say, watch Jenkins. Um, I think what I saw in that moment went back to a play that we used to run in Detroit. Mm-hmm. And when I was the point forward, Terry Mills, who was one of the early sort of stretch fours in the NBA, was a great three-point shooter. Um, Doug Collins was our coach. And Doug used to say, look, you know, Terry, if you're feeling it in a game and, you know, or you need a shot or whatever, you have a play called Michigan. He went to Michigan. And you can call the play. And so what it was, was Terry would take the ball out. He'd say Michigan, or I might say Michigan. Mm -hmm. And I would dribble down the court. And as we got over half court, I would dribble at his man. Mm -hmm. And Terry would kind of replace behind me. And I'd kind of throw it back to him for a three. And so we would do that all the time. And a lot of times, we might be the only two who knew the play. Mm -hmm. He'd take the ball out of Michigan. So I'm like, all right. I'm gonna get me an assist, you know. Yeah, and so, yeah. you know, and so I dribble down, attack his man, and then kind of throw it back to him, and he would shoot it at the top of the key or whatever, and knock down the three. And so that trailer play, like I, I, I saw that kind of developing. Yeah. And so knowing Jenkins was a great shooter, and Archie Diakono is penetrating, and and they're kind of going to the ball, trying to double team him, and he kicked it out to you know. It, it, so I, that's what I saw in that moment. I was yeah. thinking of Michigan that play. Mm-hmm. And, um, but to be able to, you know, get in there in that moment and have my voice on that call um, was really cool. And it's funny, like, you know, a lot of play-by-play guys, like they want to be the only voice. Yeah, you know? yeah. They want to, you know, but Jim, just being a team guy, like was like so excited that I got in. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and we'll talk about that now even later on. And I think it just speaks to the comfort level and the, the chemistry that our group has together. Yeah, that's super cool. Um, all right, well, you've been super gracious with your time, really appreciate it. Um, but before I let you go, I've got one more thing. Um, all time, I need a Duke starting five and a six man to win one game. Oh, wow. Okay, so so can, I, can I pick myself? Or is that- Absolutely. Oh, I don't know if I'm going to Man, that's hard, man. Oh, yeah, that's tough. Starting five. Yeah. Uh, um, somebody's going to be mad. Yeah, you're going to get a text or two. 
All right, so I have to go. That's hard, man. I'll go with, got to go with Layton. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. It's tough. It's very tough. It's tough. Um, wow. Do I have to answer that question? Um, Unfortunately, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. I'll go with Leitner. I'll go with... I'll go with Zion. Okay. Um... I'll leave myself off the team. Okay. All right. Keep it, I'm an unselfish guy. So I'll leave it. <laughs> um, put more people in there. I'll go with Leitner, Zion, J. Will. Mm -hmm. Zion, J. Will. Um, I'll go with. I got to go old school, Johnny Dawkins. Mm -hmm. Tatum, and okay. I'll bring J.J. Redick off the bench. All right. I like that team. So we got to see J, J. Will, J.D., Zion, Leitner, Tatum with J.J. Redick off the bench. Okay. I, that's a that's a good team. That's a good yeah, team. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. You definitely got a shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right uh, again i appreciate the time so much um this was great um and um yeah have fun with the playoffs uh we'll be watching and, and tuning in and listening um yeah appreciate oh, it man. hey i appreciate you man and congrats on, on all you're doing man you know, I, thank I, you I, I, i'm flattered and honored to have been on it and uh look forward to checking you out as you continue to grow your platform so yes sir I appreciate that. Uh, have a good one. Man.